If you look off your notes, you'll notice that I box the base units there in red. So you're essentially looking at three columns, number, prefix, and symbol. So the number for the base unit is 10 to the zero or one. And your base units are grams, liters, seconds, and meters. Now, if you go above the base unit, these units are bigger than the base units. So the numbers that you see there, for example, for deca, it's 10 to the first or 10 and the symbol is D. Well, deca just means 10 times larger, 10 times greater than the base unit. And again, these Greek prefixes, you've seen in actual words before, so the word decade, okay, means 10, like 10 years. So that's why deca means 10. Hecto means 100, 10 to the second, and the symbol for that is H. Kilo means 1,000, 10 to the third, and the symbol is capital K, and mega, just means one million. So a megameter is a million times larger than a meter. So because you're above the base unit, these units are larger, which means you need more of the base units to match just one of the big units above it. Okay, so for example, you need one million meters to match one megameter. As you go below the base unit, You'll see deci is the first one to come up. So deci means 10 to the minus first, or a tenth. So deci is 10 times smaller than the base unit. The symbol is little d. 10 to the minus 2 is centi. So centi is, it means one hundredth. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. Milli means one one thousandth. Okay, so again, if you go below the base unit, you're getting smaller and smaller. So you need more of these units to match one base unit. So you need a thousand millimeters to match one meter. And as you approach micro, micro has a weird Greek symbol. You can see it there on the screen. Micro means one one millionth. So you need one million micrometers for one meter. And you can see off to the side, I gave you little notes to give you a visual on the sizes of these units. So for example, the smallest one there, micro would be the size of small microorganisms, things that are microscopic. Whereas if you go, if you're climbing the, the metric scale and you go up, a mega would be suitable for expressing the distance between suns and different stars and planets. Let's try the sample problem. So you're being asked to convert five kilometers into meters. Now, step one says, just like in basic conversions, line up your units upper left and bottom right. So I'm gonna go time sign draw line, and I'm gonna put kilometers upper left and bottom right like that so that they cancel out. You're being asked to change into meters. Step two, the larger unit, the one that's higher up on the metric scale gets a one. So now I'm gonna look at my prefix chart I'm comparing kilo and the base unit. Okay, and then I just ask myself, well, which one's higher up on the chart? It's easy. If you just glance at it, it's kilo. So kilo's higher up on the chart. Kilo, give him the 1. The smaller unit always receives the 10. So put a 10 next to meters, just like that. Now, step 4. You have to look under the scientific notation column. And now you're just going to compare your two units. So Kilo is there, he's at 10 to the positive 3, and your base unit is at 10 to the 0. Okay, so pretend this is like a number line. Kilo is at plus 3, that's like his rating, okay? He's got like a plus 3 rating. Meanwhile, your base unit has a rating of 0, okay? Pretend it's like an elevator, okay? And how many floors apart are they? and it turns out it's 3. So I'm going to write a 3 as an exponent. So our answer is 5 times 10 to the third meters. And I can rewrite this in the expanded form, and this is 5,000 meters. So 5 kilometers is equal to 5,000 meters. Now ask yourself, does the answer make sense? I have San Clemente High School, and I have Trestles Beach, and I drew a line across that distance is roughly five kilometers, and our answer was 5,000 meters. So if I stack 5,000 meter sticks, 
okay? And again, a meter is roughly like three feet, three inches. It's a little bit longer than a yard. If I stack 5,000 meters together, that should cover the distance between San Clemente High School and Trestles Beach. Let's try problem number two, change five meters into millimeters. So this time we're going down, we're going below the base unit. So let's figure out our units first. Okay, we're gonna line them up upper left versus bottom right. So I want meters to cancel out. And there it goes. I want millimeters on top. That's what I'm changing into. Now, step two, the larger unit receives a one. So let's figure out what we're comparing. We're comparing meters versus millimeters. So I'm gonna place two dots like that. Okay, so now I just glance at it. I'm like, okay, meters is higher up. Okay, so meters should get the one and millimeters will get the 10. All right. And now step four is just comparing the numbers of the two units. So let's bring up our number line again. Okay, our base unit is at zero and milli is at negative three. Okay, so the absolute distance between them is three. It's a net distance of three. So we're gonna put a positive three as the exponent. So our answer now is just five times 10 to the third millimeters. Okay, and I can rewrite this as 5,000 millimeters. And then you ask yourself, does it make sense? Look at that green ruler that's right above my head. Well, a millimeter is a very tiny unit, okay? It's like, you know, the size or the, the diameter of like a hair, right? So I would probably need 5,000 of those millimeters to match five meters. And again, to give you a visual, a meter is about the length of a yardstick, so I have five yardsticks. Five yardsticks would probably need 5,000 millimeters to match that. All right, let's see what they want in problem six. Number six, we're gonna change 23 kilometers into, it looks like hectometers for this problem. Okay, so again, let's go through the four steps. Okay, I'm gonna write down what we have, 23 kilometers, time sign, draw a line, put kilometers so that they're above and below each other, diagonally like that, cancel out the units. Okay, step two, let's figure out who gets the one and who gets the 10. All right, so I'm gonna place a dot there, kilo and hecto, because this problem involves just those two units. I'll place a dot there. Kilo's higher, hecto's lower. The one that's higher always gets the one. The one that's lower always receives the 10. And now we just need to figure out what the exponent is. I'm gonna look at my scientific notation chart. Okay, kilo has a three, hecto has a two. The distance between them is just one, so I'm gonna write a one as the exponent. And this one's plain and simple, 23 times 10. 10 to the first is really just 10. And our answer can be rewritten as 230 hectometers. So 23 kilometers is equal to 230 hectometers. Okay, problem number eight, change 342 millimeters into micrometers. Step one, line up your units again, upper left and bottom right. So millimeters will go upper left and bottom right, just like that. Make sure the millimeters cancel out. And step two, let's compare our two units. We're comparing milli and micro. Milli's higher up, micro's lower. So milli gets the one, micro gets the 10. The 10 also receives an exponent. Okay, and to figure out the exponent, let's look in the far right column under scientific notation. Okay, so milli has a negative three rating, micro has negative six, and the absolute distance between them is a positive three. Okay, so let's write our answer out, 342 times 10 to the third micrometers. Okay. And we could rewrite this as 342,000 micrometers. Or to make it look nice and pretty again, in proper scientific notation, 3.42 times 10 to the fifth micrometers. Problem number nine, change 12 megameters into micrometers. So just like before, line up your units, make sure mega cancels out. We're going from mega down to micro. So mega is higher up, 
Micro is lower. Mega gets the 1 because he's higher up. Micro gets the 10 because he's lower. Let's compare their exponents. We have a plus 6 and a negative 6. So what's our absolute distance between them? So we have plus 6, minus 6. How many floors separate these two? And it turns out to be 12. So I'm going to write 12 for the exponent. Rewrite our answer, 12 times 10 to the 12th micrometers. You can actually leave it like that. I'm OK with that. Or in proper scientific notation, where the decimal is to the immediate right of the leading integer, 1.2 times 10 to the 13th micrometers. All right, so that just about wraps up my series on the metric system. Please email me if you need help on any of these problems. Be sure to complete the rest of the online notes for parts 1, 2, and 3. And remember to include an ID photo of yourself in the pictures of the work you'll submit online. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.